Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about the unusual complication of stent migration. An LED stent uh, that was pushed downstream by an NC balloon after it was deployed. Uh, we'll review a systematic approach uh, for how to deal with stent migration and uh, embolization. The patient is a 50-year-old male smoker uh, with a family history of uh, CAD who uh, presented with chest pain and rolled in for an NSTEMI uh, with a troponin of uh, 2.5 uh, nanograms per mil. His echo was normal. On cath, um, the RCA has only mild disease. The LED and circumflex are shown. You'll notice the catheter jumping into the left main, and this kept happening repeatedly as the patient took uh, breaths. And look carefully, uh, you might see a hint of dye staining in the proximal LED. So uh, clearly the uh, culprit for the NSTEMI is the severe stenosis in the mid-circumflex. But uh, you'll notice an iatrogenic lesion as well uh, from the jumpy catheter. There is a focal catheter dissection uh, in the proximal LED. It is not uh, flow limiting. So um, what should we do with this? Uh, should we stent it or uh, should we just uh, leave it alone? Well, um, so even though the LED dissection is not flow limiting, it is an anterograde dissection, uh, meaning that the dissection opens in the direction of forward uh, blood flow. Uh, these uh, dissections are prone to extension and spiraling, especially in a relatively undiseased vessel uh, with no plaque or calcium uh, to stop the propagation of the dissection. And moreover, we are in the proximal LED with a huge area of myocardium at risk. So we felt that it was important to stent the LED and cover the dissection in addition uh, to fixing the circumflex. All right, so our first task is to get wire access to the LED uh, before uh, the uh, dissection started to extend. Unfortunately, uh, this was fairly straightforward and we got a BMW uh, uneventfully down to the distal LED. So now uh, with the wire in the LED, uh, should we stent the LED first or go after the circumflex first? We um, actually decided to go after the circumflex first. Um, the dissection in the LED is so proximal uh, that we were concerned that a stent there would partially gel the circ, making uh, PCI of the circ uh, more challenging. So uh, with the wire control of the LED, uh, we decided to go after the circumflex first. Our goal was to do the circumflex with the minimal contrast injections to avoid extending the uh, LED dissection. And thankfully, uh, PCI of the circumflex was straightforward. Uh, the circumflex wired easily with the pro water. Uh, we pre-dilated with a 3.0 balloon, uh, stented with a 3.5 by 28 uh, DES, and post-dilated with a 4.0 millimeter NC balloon. And the uh, final andrographic result in the circumflex uh, turned out to be very satisfactory. All right, so uh, on to uh, PCI of the LED. Uh, we did not uh, pre-dilate. Uh, pre-dilating a dissection uh, runs the risk of extending the dissection. And since this, a, this is a non-flow limiting dissection in previously healthy tissue, there was no reason to believe that the stent would not adequately expand. So we stented the LED with a 4.0 by 15 millimeter DES, and we intentionally chose a longer stent than usual to pin in the dissection and prevent propagation of any intramural hematoma uh, that uh, might have formed uh, in the uh, dissection plane. And we went ahead and post dilated the, the uh, stent with a 4.0 uh, millimeter NC balloon. Uh, we kept the inflation pressure at nominal, uh, which is actually lower than that, uh, what I typically do, again, to prevent squishing out and the propagation of any intramural hematoma. And the andrographic result in the LV seems to be quite nice, and uh, we uh, cannot see uh, that the, the section flap anymore. Um, so are we done? Well, um, this being the proximal LED, we decided to IVIS, and thank goodness we did. Uh, 
as you can see from the IVIS run, uh, even though the angiographic appearance of the LED seemed to be very nice, the 4.0 stent is clearly significantly undersized uh, with poor uh, apposition of the stent to the vessel wall. Uh, you saw the uh, circumflex wire coming in at the end of the run. And I thought that this was a nice illustration of the utility of intravascular imaging. And I personally have a fairly low bar uh, to do OCT or uh, IVIS. All right, so we clearly have to post-dilate the stent. Uh, we passed a big 5.0 millimeter NC balloon to the LED, and it did have a little trouble advancing. Uh, we did a cine, and wait a minute, where is the stent? And to our great surprise, it looked like the LED stent had actually moved and is now quite a bit downstream from its original position. To say that this is an extremely unusual complication is an understatement. So uh, we think the stent uh, was so undersized and malopposed that it was probably pushed downstream by the tip of the NC balloon as we were uh, maneuvering it into the LED. Um, thankfully, we were able to get that 5.0 balloon uh, down across the stent now in its more distal position and uh, perform uh, post-dilation. And after post-dilation, uh, the stent looked fine, and uh, importantly, <laughs> it has not moved any further. And uh, interestingly, if you look carefully at the very proximal, uh, very proximal part of the LED, um, the original dissection flap uh, is, uh, is back. So uh, we got a big stent down this time, a 5.0 by 22 millimeter DES, uh, overlapping with the previous stent and uh, perform uh, post-dilation uh, with a 5.0 uh, NC balloon. And um, thankfully for the patient, uh, things turn out well. Um, the final angiographic result is quite satisfactory uh, with the dissection nicely tacked up in the LED and the copper lesion nicely treated in the circumflex. And the patient went home the next day uh, after an uneventful night. So this case uh, fortunately turned out to be fairly uneventful eventually, and the outcome uh, was good. Uh, but uh, stent embolization is such an unusual complication that it's helpful to have a systematic approach uh, thought out ahead of time. So uh, when you are faced with an embolized stent, um, the first question you need to ask yourself is whether your stent is still on the wire. If the answer is yes, uh, then ask yourself whether you can just deploy the stent where it is. If the answer is also yes, in other words, your stent is still in a reasonable position and you can get a balloon to cross, then the solution is just to deploy the stent. And this is what happened in this case. You could consider intravascular imaging uh, to assess for sizing and uh, possible residual dissection. If your stent is not on the wire, uh, then ask yourself whether you can crush the embolized stent in place. If the answer is yes, then pass a parallel wire, ideally adjacent uh, to the embolized stent, and crush it with a second stent. Now, passing that wire could be quite tricky, uh, especially if the embolized stent is mangled or, or misoriented. Your wire uh, might actually go through the embolized stent struts uh, rather than next to it, but that's actually okay. If that happens, uh, you'll have to dilate the embolized stent cell with a balloon uh, before you'll be able to pass your second stent to crush. But what if uh, you can neither deploy the stent or crush the stent? Well, this could happen if your wire, balloon, or equipment cannot cross the embolized stent, or if the stent is so badly mangled or misoriented that it's not feasible uh, to uh, deploy or crush it, or if there's a lot of protrusion of the embolized stent into the aorta. Or less ideal, you might not want to deploy or crush the stent uh, in the left main at a major bifurcation or in a small branch. Well, under these circumstances, the next question you ask yourself is whether you can just leave the embolized stent alone. Um, if your stent is in a, a small side branch or very far distal, uh, it might be reasonable to just leave it alone and admit the patient to the ICU and uh, get through a, a controlled infarct. Now, um, if your embolized stent is in a major epicardial vessel, then you cannot just leave it alone. And if you can't deploy it or crush it, then uh, you're going to have to uh, try to retrieve it. Uh, this is usually extremely challenging, uh, but uh, there are a few techniques uh, to be aware of. Uh, 
I have another uh, video uh, on uh, stent dislodgement uh, in which I go through uh, these techniques in uh, greater detail, and I've uh, included the links in the uh, comments section below. Uh, but in brief, the easiest technique uh, to retrieve a stent is uh, probably the uh, small balloon technique. Uh, if you still have wire access and can get a small balloon across the stent, uh, then you inflate it distal to the stent. And then after that, you'll be able to pull the balloon and stent back in your guide as one unit. Um, another technique is the uh, guide pinning technique. Uh, this is useful if your stent is close to the ostium. Uh, in this technique, uh, try to sheath uh, part of your stent uh, into your guide or, or a guide liner, and then inflate the balloon in the guide next to the stent. Uh, this then pins that stent against the wall of the guide, and you'll be able to pull everything out. If your stent is protruding into the aorta, uh, then snaring, uh, usually with a gooseneck, uh, might be a good option. Uh, conversely, if your stent is uh, too far down the vessel, uh, you might try to wire uh, the stent out. And you do this by the so-called wire twirling technique. Um, in this technique, you pass uh, uh, multiple wires, uh, generally three or four, uh, through the embolized stent and twirl them all together. Once the stent is nicely entangled with the wire, uh, then you pull everything out. And finally, if a retrieval is unsuccessful, uh, then um, you'll need to call for your surgical colleagues uh, to take it out. All right, take home messages. Uh, first, uh, avoid undersizing stents. Uh, this is true in general, uh, but it is especially true with short stents, uh, which obviously have less length uh, to grab onto the vessel wall. Uh, be especially careful at the ostium uh, because some of the stent will be hanging in the aorta by design. You want to make sure that you have an adequate amount of stent in the coronary. So I would be very leery of placing any stent less than 12 millimeters long uh, at the ostium. Uh, finally, we went over a simplified approach uh, to deal with an embolized stent. Uh, in brief, if it's still on the wire, deploy the stent. If it's not on the wire, crush the stent. If you can't deploy it or crush it, uh, then see if you can leave it alone. If you can't leave it alone, try to retrieve the stent. And if that can't be done, then call for surgical removal. Thank you for watching.